When you finish this program, you will understand the operation of the pump, so you can relate to service and troubleshooting instructions. Some of you will repair or calibrate this pump on the test bench. Some of you will make minor pump adjustments on the vehicle. All of you will know what you're doing and why. Welcome back to Area Diesel Service. Today, we're going to bring you a new episode of collaborative content. We're doing some work for fellow YouTube content creator, 73 Diamond Rio. So if you're not familiar with 73 Diamond Rio, we'll drop you a link in the description. Please go over and check out his channel. He is another diesel creek type of dude crusty rusty old construction equipment a lot of cable operated shovels and hose from years and years ago another friend of ours keeping this old construction equipment out of the scrap yards today is no exception if you're a follower of frank's channel you may have seen before he's got an international 270a backhoe I think this thing's been running around his property for a few years and he's got some issues with the injection pump and that's why we are here today. 270A International Backhoe, smaller backhoe from back in the day, checking in about 14,000 pounds. This thing's powered by a D268 German diesel, much like you would find in 684 784 international tractors from the same vintage right same setup german diesel va pump this particular engine 268 cubic inches that is four and a half liters or so this application rated at 77 horsepower circa 1980 would be my guess on this machine a model of pump we haven't done for our YouTube audience yet, so I'm excited to bring you along for a new variation of what we do here. The technicians that work on these pumps are a little camera shy, so we may have to ask them to let us come back and kind of give you updates throughout the process. Bosch fuel injection pump, Bosch rotary fuel injection pump of the VA variety. There are two different VA style pumps CR and BR is kind of how we refer to them. This is a CR. The discharge ports come straight out the back of the pump. On the BR, you'll find that these ports are canted off center a little bit. So similar in operation. This particular unit is part number 04603140390. And it was discontinued as an assembly in 1992. Enter area diesel service. You can't buy this pump. We're here to take care of all of your injection pump needs. This one, no exception. International number 3218640 or 735124. That's the international part numbers for this Bosch injection pump. These are sometimes a challenge. So the assembly was discontinued in 1992 Bosch still supports this platform with some of the subcomponents the primary um, issue that we get into is with the distributor head so this is the head that goes in the back of the injection pump this is where a lot of the magic happens you can no longer buy a new head from Bosch if your head is worn out we have to send these off and get them rebuilt and that's a costly and not very timely process this Distributor head is a little different than most of what you may have seen before in the Standardine or Rusa Master world in that not only is the head the distributing element of the pump, but this head is also the pumping element. So this plunger not only pumps and delivers the fuel, but it also rotates to distribute the fuel to the cylinders. Notable thing about these injection pumps, they are not mechanically governed, right? So no fly weights, no weight cage, no, uh, no governor spring in that regard. This thing is hydraulically governed off of transfer pump pressure. Extremely robust, high quality units. They really aren't uh, plagued by any 
failures necessarily, but the challenge today again is, is in the parts. This particular unit, the story as we understand it, ran fine, but what the uh, situation was, it developed a fuel leak somewhere, I'm assuming at the throttle lever, proverbial bag o parts, right? So no, nothing new there. This is the throttle, this is the lever that mounts onto it, and it developed a leak here. It sounds like Frank started to disassemble this thing, I'm assuming, because in the back of this bushing, there's a pin that snapped off, and we'll try and bring you in close and show you. But my assumption is uh, he went to take the head out to help seal up this pump and didn't know that there was a pin between this bushing and this head. So when he pulled the head out, snapped the pin off, when he discovered that, threw in the towel, called the professionals, hey, can you help me? And yes, we can. The only other thing that is concerning me a little bit is there's a spring that goes in behind there and I don't see it in the bag of parts. He's got a couple, I see the other half of the pin, I see some washers and nuts, but I don't see the, the governor spring there. So if for some reason we are not able to save this pump, we do have a potential plan B. So we do stock a few DPA or CAV based conversion pumps. So really the, the biggest challenge is the mounting flange. This is unique to the VA family of pumps. You don't generally find that mounting flange on a DPA or a CAV or a Lucas or a Delphi or whatever their name is today. You don't generally find that flange on a CAV pump. So this is kind of a custom conversion pump for displacing VA pumps that can no longer be repaired. Not a perfect drop-in solution. Requires a little bit of ingenuity and adaptation but potentially if we can't save your VA pump we may have a, a different option for you. We also find or get quite a few phone calls. People steal these so they're so hard to find. People will see a machine sitting out in a hedgerow somewhere and they'll go out and steal the injection pump. And We get the call all the time. I don't have a pump to even rebuild. Cores are hard to locate for this. Again you can't buy a new one so potentially this DPA style replacement could be an option for you there. So we're gonna get this thing back into the pump shop. We're gonna give it the full service, right? So you'll watch us clean it up, tear it down, disassemble, inspect, get some hardware, go back together, calibrate, paint, and send it back out to Frank so he can get his backhoe back up and running. And we'll bring you along throughout the process. So that's where we're at. We'll be right back. We're back in the teardown room and step one, we've got the pump completely disassembled, cleaned up and preliminary inspection complete. Frank had given us some pictures of some internal components before he sent this in. So we kind of knew what we were getting into, but we always want to put our own eyeballs on it first. Everything actually looked pretty good. We did know that the cam plate inside of this pump is pretty pitted. We'll try and bring you in close and show you, but right here, pretty significant pitting on the cam plate. Right here, if you can see it, similar pitting issues on the rollers. In our four cylinder cam plate, there's a cam lobe lift within each 90 degree sector. If you consider the rollers as fixed, you can see the cam plate and plunger rise up on the rollers to TDC and return to BDC. And the rollers right around this cam plate, that's what goes up and down to create the pumping out of the hydraulic head. Cam and rollers, we already knew we were gonna have to replace. Pin that was broken is in this component here. And we've already brought you guys in and seen this, but again, there's the busted off pin. That was really what stopped Frank in his tracks and that's really why we got the pump. So we'll beat that out of there. You can actually, on the back side of this same widget, you can get in there. Once this thing is out of the bushing, you can drive the pin out the other side. So we'll knock that out of there. We'll get us a cam plate, a roller kit, a gasket kit. We'll do a more thorough cleaning of these components. We'll take them up to the build-up room and we'll bring you back when we start putting this thing back together. 
We've made it into the build-up room. We've made some additional progress off camera. We're going to give you a couple updates, let you know what we've done so far. We'll try and get you a little bit of footage of this thing going back together. But for now, we have finished cleaning the pump housing, and we have pressed in a new seal right here on the drive shaft and finished a more thorough inspection. We've ensured that this housing is good to go again. Head and rotor, right? So this is not only the pumping element, but also the dis distribution element of this pump. We've replaced the O-ring here, which is what Frank was going in after himself. And then we have inspected and measured the delivery button here on top. And that sets overall fuel, how big of a bite this thing can take. The rollers that were all corroded that we showed you before have now been replaced. And this is another item that you have to inspect and measure. So we wanna make sure that the height of these rollers is equal all around to guarantee an equal delivery. If not, sometimes you can swap them around and, and make sure that they're all within specification. Transfer pump, so this is an eccentric liner. You can kind of see there, it's an offset cam ring. And then these blades are what ride around in that. That's what creates your uh, transfer pump pressure. That inspects fine, everything's good to go there. Cam ring, we talked about brand new Bosch cam ring out of the warehouse. So we can put this one in the scrap bin. And then the pin that we talked about having been broken, you can see they've got it replaced, got the component cleaned up. Looks like he's got a new O-ring on there, cleaned all of the schmoo off the backside. So that's ready to go back together. Expected timing piston. So this is a variable timing injection pump and this piston moves inside of the housing in that fashion there and it's connected to some of these other magical components and that's how you get injection timing advanced at low rpm supply pump pressure has little effect on timing piston travel as pressure rises with increasing rpm piston movement advances the roller ring opposite to drive shaft rotation this advances the time when the cam plate will lift from BDC to begin the stroke. And then last component, fuel shutoff solenoid. So 12 volt electromagnetic solenoid here. And there's a little, little bitty dude in there that comes out and operates on the shutoff lever. That's how you get electric shutoff out of a VA pump. Surprisingly, for the age of this thing, it's in really pretty good condition. Move on to the next step, which is assembling these things all back into an elaborate contraption. Once we get that done, we'll move it out to the test stand where we will verify deliveries and timing and equal contributions, things of that nature. Try and get you a little bit of slapping this dude back together and then we'll move into the test stand and we'll show you that step. So be back in a little bit. Liberal dosing of new schmoo. Mm -hmm. Is that to hold it together or is that to lubricate it? Basically both. Lubricates the O-rings, but also helps hold my springs in there when I turn them upside down. You've got to get this pin to go into that gap in that bottom shaft. Same way with the top one, we've got to get that pin to go into that slot. So he's kind of got the orientation set there where he knows where he's going to drop into it. Just wiggle it, should fall right down. Same way with this one. Whoa. Okay. I'm gonna keep your finger on them until you get this plate on there because this one, that bottom one, does have a big spring on it and it will pop out. The integral supply pump keeps the interior filled with diesel fuel, not lubricating oil, but fuel under pressure. So those shafts that he just put in there are kind of where the magic happens. We'll try and show you the flow chart on this pump. It's really a pretty fascinating design, the way that this thing 
is hydraulically governed and, and the way they use basically transfer pump pressure. So transfer pump pressure represents engine speed because the engine is locked into turning the transfer pump and the way that they route the fuel through this pump and through these different spools is really how they govern this thing. He's gotten most of it back together here. The calibration for this thing, as I understand it, mostly happens with stop points on these different bolts here. Relatively simple to calibrate. There is a transfer pump pressure setting as well, and then some screw adjustments on the stand, and that's about it. So he's got it 90% reassembled. On the governor, you'll find a full load adjustment screw. You should adjust this screw only on the test bench, never on the vehicle. So we talked about the button that we measured and inspected before we put this thing back together. What that button does, the height of that button determines start of injection. You can see we've got this thing fixtured up. We've got shop air coming over to the transfer pump pressure port. And then we've got that air flowing through the pump down into this vath of calibration fluid and then we've got dial indicator out here on the end of it for this type of pump lift to port closure settings are important because delivery does not begin until a specified lift from bdc what we're trying to do is determine by turning the drive shaft with this wrench that the height of that button is dictating start of injection when it is truly supposed to occur. We know that port closure is related to timing and metering of fuel delivery. Let's see how. Remember the motion of the plunger? Its stroke to TDC and return and its continuous rotation? The plunger fills with supply pump fuel, shown in orange, during pre-stroke while it's still at BDC. After rotation to port closure, the plunger lifts from BDC and begins delivery at high pressure, shown in red. The distributor slot delivers high pressure fuel through a delivery passage and line to each cylinder in firing order. I'm going to pull down on the wrench to rotate the pump some. We're going to wait for the air to quit flowing through. You can see the gauge moving just a little bit. All right, so there's the end of the air. And then we look at the gauge to determine if the stack up height inside the pump is correct. So if that's off and you time this to the engine, the start of injection will not be what it should be in conjunction with the installation specification. At least that's what I'm told. This is final step before we head out to the test bench. Put it on the bubbler. Pump is assembled and we are in the calibration room. High up on the list of things that I'm not qualified to operate or speak about is the Hartridge AVM2 PC. Hartridge is the test equipment leg of Delphi and they make an extremely accurate and high quality test bench. That's what we're tooled up and running off our VA pumps on today, every day. This is what we run them on. Generally speaking, this is a little bit faster test bench to run them off on as opposed to traditional graduates, right? We have to, when we're on a stand with graduates, we have to set it up at an RPM and a delivery spec and wait for that graduate to fill. With this machine and the advancements in technology today, we can take a much shorter window, much shorter picture and extrapolate that out and get to the same information. A little bit more modern test stand. Again, keep in mind, I don't know anything about this. I'm certainly not qualified to run it, but it is basically like an engine lathe, right? So there's a motor back here turning this chuck that's driving the pump. It also supplies fuel. So this is inlet fuel at a specified pressure. We can tell the machine to give us 30 pounds, five pounds, whatever this pump calls for, the stand supplies it. So supply fuel in here, and then return fuel coming out of the pump. We have a 12 volt supply on the shutoff solenoid. On most pumps, fuel shutoff is electrical. A solenoid valve closes the supply of fuel to the fill port and the plunger. And then we have this device, which I can only assume is measuring the advance of the timing piston that we spoke of earlier. So as supply pump pressure increases with RPM, 
the timing piston travels, advancing the time when injection begins. For this reason, procedures on the test bench include measuring the travel of the timing piston as the RPM changes. And then this is where the injected fuel, so four cylinder engine, four lines coming out of the pump, over to these fancy doohickeys replicating a fuel injector going in back here where we have another piece of advanced computer technology measuring delivery electronically. Give it some fuel, come up here and tell it I want you to turn at 200 RPMs and, and then we run a test plan and we see how much fuel it's delivering at that RPM. So keep in mind I'm simplifying it and trying to explain it as I understand it, but that's basically the gist of it. Turn the pump at a specified RPM, measure the delivery for a given amount of time, compare it to a test plan that we write out on these test plan sheets, and then determine is the pump making specification or not. The hardest specification on any pump, and specifically rotary style pumps, is cranking speed. The clearances and the tolerances in the pump become most apparent at cranking speed. There's not enough excess fuel to overcome those tolerances. If you can make cranking on a rotary pump, you'll make every other specification. It's just a matter of getting it dialed in. Again, the adjustments on this pump are in these stop screws here. And I can't begin to tell you which one does what, but those are the adjustments. And the other one, this this doodad right here, that is transfer pump pressure. So it's a seat and spring against the transfer pump fuel pressure. And if you want to increase transfer pump fuel pressure, you drive that down further. You add tension to the spring, making it harder to lift the check valve or relief valve off of the seat. Again, being hydraulically governed, transfer pump pressure is extremely critical, more so than a mechanically governed pump. So you'll see in some of the calibrations, he'll set the, tra the transfer pump pressure and you'll immediately see it impact the degrees of advance that the, that the advanced mechanism is achieving. So that's about as much as I know or can explain. We'll get out of the way and we'll watch a professional step through this. What you're going to see is him typing in different RPMs to turn the pump and then you'll see different measurements coming out here and you'll watch him walk through a test plan. Does it make this much fuel at cranking? Does it make this much fuel at full load? At mid RPM, at half throttle, does it make this much fuel? And uh, you'll watch us test the shutoff solenoid and basically trying to replicate every different possible engine scenario on the test stand and that's about it. So if it passes here, We'll clean it up, we will tag and serialize to identify the pump, we'll give it a paint job, and we'll meet you at the parts counter and we'll wrap this thing up. Let's see if we can make some fuel.
here it is. We brought you through some of the process, not the full feature on this one, but standard operating procedure. Clean it up, disassemble, inspect, repair, reassemble, calibrate, paint, and return to the customer. Keep in mind, this is what we consider repair level work, not full on remanufacturing where we replace every last widget and component that could or potentially wear. What did we do? Uh, we brought you through some of it. Cam plate and roller kit were rusted, corroded, pitted beyond salvation. Gasket kit, standard seals and O-rings, and then a few other normal wear items, pins and bushings, things of that nature. And four hours of labor in the area diesel fuel shop and the bill on this pump, $817. That's where we're at. To give you an idea, your results may vary. It's always based on time and material. It takes what it takes. It is what it is. Just know that we are honest, fair, trustworthy, and experienced. If you need service work on your VA pump, or any pump for that matter, please hit us up. We'd love an opportunity to earn your business. I wanna show you kind of the hydraulic flow chart for the governing mechanism of this pump. This pump is maybe not as well understood as some of the other pumps. Such an instrument is the turbo encabulator. Now basically, the only new principle involved is that instead of power being generated by the relative motion of conductors and fluxes, it is produced by the modial interaction of magneto-reluctance and capacitive directance. The original machine had a base plate of prefamulated amulite surmounted by a malleable logarithmic casing in such a way that the two spurving bearings were in a direct line with a panometric fam. The latter consisted simply of six hydrocoptic marzal veins so fitted to the ambifacient lunar wane shaft that side fumbling was effectively prevented. The main winding was of the normal lotus o delta type placed in panendermic semi-boloid slots of the stator, every seventh conductor being connected by a non-reversible tremie pipe to the differential girdle spring on the up end of the Grammys. The turbo encabulator has now reached a high level of development and it's being successfully used in the operation of nofertrunions. When we have levers and valves and flyweights and centrifugal force, we can kind of see and understand how these other styles of pumps are governing themselves and governing fuel delivery. This one with hydraulic strategies is a bit different. It's a VA style pump. The V short for Fair Tyler, meaning distributor. It's also called a rotary pump. So this is a VA, the A iteration of Bosch's rotary pump. VA here, VE, like you may have seen on first gen Dodge pickup, Volkswagen stuff, and a million other industrial and commercial diesel applications. You might be familiar with VP, so rotary P series, VP, Bosch, VP44, the VA, the first one. The flow chart through this pump will bring you in and try and explain only as much as I understand of it how this dude is governing itself. All right, so here's the operational flow chart of the Bosch VA injection pump. First thing noteworthy, bottom right hand corner, 1972. This has been on the wall at Area Diesel since 1973, and we were a little scared to take it down. We weren't sure if it would turn to dust. You can see it's picked up some calibration fluid over the years. It used to be more white, but She's a little tainted today. Anyway, again, as I understand it, a walk through the fuel and fuel delivery of a VA pumps. Down here, number six represents the fuel tank and the supply system comes out of the fuel tank through number three, which is the auxiliary supply pump, lift pump. You can see the priming lever on the side of the lift pump comes up and goes through a filtration system which does have an overflow valve. Should the filtration become blocked, it'll bypass. And then supply fuel comes into the injection pump through the inlet fitting and comes down. So the yellow fuel in this diagram is the supply fuel. 
This component here is the supply pump. We talked about uh, during the buildup, the eccentric ring and the veins that do the charge pressure for the injection pump. So yellow supply fuel comes in here, goes through the pressure regulating valve, um, which we spoke of. This is what sets the transfer pump pressure. So you drive this uh, seat further into the pump, supply fuel in, goes through the vein pump, comes out as charge transfer pump pressure for this injection pump. And then it makes its way over to the inside of the injection pumps. This component here with these ramps, this is the cam plate that was pitted inside of Frank's pump. And this component here is the roller, uh, which was also pitted. We looked at that, there's four rollers on this pump. As the engine turns this pump, right? This represents the drive shaft. As the engine turns the pump, the rollers walk around and encounter the different ramps on the cam plate. And that's what turns and pumps the pumping element inside of the head, which is this component here. So this thing not only turns inside of the head to distribute fuel, but it also pumps in and out to deliver the fuel. This area here is the magic of the VA style injection pump area eight right here where the green fuel is that's the governor stage of the pump you can see a spring and a check ball and then number nine is the throttle so speed control basically this pump is effectively computing right so it's taking input from the transfer pump pressure which represents engine rpm so the transfer pump is locked to the engine the faster you turn the pump the more pressure and volume it creates. It's determining based on transfer pump pressure and the position of the throttle lever and the settings of these different springs inside of this. It's determining how much fuel it's going to deliver. And then you can see the red out here is the injected fuel. There, the fuel injector needle opens and fuel is delivered. How does this delivery stop? That's the job of the metering sleeve. As the plunger strokes through the metering sleeve, the movement uncovers a spill port, opening the high pressure circuit and spilling the remaining fuel into the pump interior. And then over here is the injector and a return off of the injector back to sump. It also shows the different strokes down here on the bottom. So you can see as this pumping element moves in and out this away, you can see that it's opening and closing off these different passages. So this is bottom dead center before it makes a stroke of delivery. And you can see as the rollers move around the cam plate and the plunger moves further back into the pump. During the rotation, the fill port lines up and opens one of the fill slots, bringing in fuel for one cylinder. The port then closes. You can see it block off different passages and charge fuel out to the injection system. Bottom dead center before it delivers fuel during fuel delivery, end of delivery, and you can see it recharging for the next delivery of fuel. Probably an oversimplified explanation and only as good as I understand it, but that is the fuel delivery and governing functionality of your Bosch VA injection pump. Operating principles important to your service and troubleshooting instruction brought to you by Bosch. So that is as much as I know about Bosch VA injection pumps, and I'll tell you that it's only a fraction of what the guys in the pump shop knows. The guys in the pump shop are trained and experienced experts on all injection pumps. There's your rundown Bosch VA style injection pump rebuild for our friends at 73 Diamond Rio. If you're not familiar with him, we'll drop you a link, run over there, tell him we sent you. If you did come to us from Frank's channel, we appreciate you stopping by. Welcome aboard. We'd be happy to have you as a subscriber. If you need anything, injection pump, turbocharger, or diesel engine components, we do more than just those. We do overhaul kits, starters and alternators, water pumps. If it's on a diesel from lawnmower to locomotive, we're here to help. And we pride ourselves in providing our customers with a high quality customer experience. If you need to get a hold of us, 
don't hesitate to do so. You can call us at 800-637-2658. You can drop us an email at parts at areadiesel.com. You can log on to our website at areadieselservice.com where you'll have the ability to chat instantly with a diesel engine expert through the button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen or you can stop by any of our locations in Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana. If you do need something and reach out to us and let us know that you learned of us through this collaborative content with 73 Diamond Rio. We'll pick up the shipping to get your project in here. We'll send you a shipping label, and we'll also throw in some of that sweet area diesel service merch. So currently we have a couple of different hat options in our merch store, summer and winter hat. We've got some really nice mechanics gloves in stock, and our most recent addition, area diesel service fender covers, right? So you can lay over your fender, not scratch up your, uh, your paint jobs. If you don't have anything that you need to send us and you're interested in this merch or you want to support us, we'll drop you a link to the merch store and you can check out what we've got there. If not, uh, we just appreciate your view, your comment, and your subscription. And again, if you need anything, don't hesitate to hit us up. That's it. Thanks for watching. It's not cheap, but I'm sure the government will buy it.